Hi kids and welcome to part 2 of animal life. Let's continue with the chapter here. We left off with different modes of breathing. Now in this let us look at the different methods of moving. When you see movement, animals move mainly in search of food or they will move to escape from their enemies or they also move to look for shelter against heat, rain and cold to protect themselves. Now animals move in many different ways. Some move very fast, some move very slowly, some move over very small areas of land while there are some other animals that move or travel to very long distances. Now we will be looking at different methods or different modes of movements based on the kind of habitat that the animal lives in. So what are the different methods? The different methods are we'll be looking at animals that move on land, we'll look at animals that can fly and we will see animals that can swim. So the first one is animals that move on land. Now when you see animals that move on land, most animals like lions, tigers, elephants all walk on four limbs okay so they have two front limbs and two back limbs with which they will walk now in this the front limbs will be called as four limbs while the limbs that are back will be called as hind limbs now let us look at how these four limbs and hind limbs help the animal to move in different ways on land the first one that we have are good runners now can you think of examples we have cheetah we have horse we have gazelle we have zebra and foxes so we have all the animals right here can you identify which is what so we have the zebra here we have horse we have cheetah the fox and the gazelle so all of these animals are very good runners and when they are very good runners they have very very strong muscular legs that help them to run the second one are our favorites the hoppers we have animals that hop like rabbits and hare now if you see hoppers their hind limbs are strong and longer than their fore limbs that's why they're able to hop around the next one is us we can see us as the example that is humans humans are the only life forms that generally comfortably walk on two legs now you can see here where our hind limbs are modified for feet which help us walk whereas our four limbs are modified for holding grabbing things as well as to do work now if you notice our hands our fingers or our thumb is arranged in such a way that we can hold things this is a special feature of only human beings no other animal can hold things with their hands because their thumbs do not allow them to do so now if you see the next one which is animals which crawl we have the examples of crocodiles lizards and tortoises which have very short limbs so because they have very short limbs they can't really run they have to crawl on land while we have all these different animals that have limbs we have another type which don't have limbs at all such as snakes as well as worms if you see snakes and worms they don't have limbs right but still they move around by curving their body from side to side if you see the case of worms worms will move by contracting and expanding their body the last one we have are insects which will have six legs if you see any insect around your house starting from a bee to an ant all of these insects have six legs and these six legs help the animal in moving around so this completes the animals that move on land let us look a little about animals that can fly now if you see animals that can fly to fly you need special organs right so the organs that help in flying are called as wings now what are these wings wings are nothing but the modified four limbs of that animal okay so here the four limbs are converted into wings which help the animal in flying now wings help in flying when wings move up and down they help in pushing the animal forward through air what about their hind limbs now birds will use their hind limbs to perch on trees to walk on land as well as even hop so these are the various ways in which birds use their fore limbs as well as hind limbs also their body is so small that it makes it easy for them to fly now apart from flying birds we also have certain group of birds which cannot fly they are 
we have the ostrich we have the emu and we have the penguin so these three birds are very large we saw that birds need to be light and small in order for them to fly but these are very large and heavy birds because of their body weight they cannot fly and they have very poorly developed wings so that is why these three birds cannot fly if you look at insects on the other hand we also have certain flying insects can you think of the insects that can fly Yes, they are housefly, we have the mosquito, we have a butterfly, we have the moth and we have the honeybee. So all of these are insects which can fly because they have wings that can carry their very light body in air. Now this is about animals that can fly. Let's look at some animals that can swim. Now when you look at animals that can swim, these animals also have adapted their body to suit their habitat which is water. If you see fish for example, fish will swim by moving their body from side to side. They also have three different types of fins which help them in balancing, in changing position as well as stopping in water. So these fins act like the oars of the boat. What is the oar? An oar is the stick that the boatman uses to push the boat forward. But there are also certain insects that can swim in water. If you take the water boatman, if you take water boatman as an example, if you can see its front legs are modified to form an oar. So it will keep beating this in circular motion which helps the animal in moving forward. Okay, so this is an insect which can swim in water. Apart from this, we have certain animals which use their legs to swim. For example, we have the prawns and we have tadpoles which will use their legs to swim in water. Whereas if you see certain amphibians like frog, they have webbed feet. You can see here the webbed feet between their fingers, they have a web. Okay, they have a flap of skin. By kicking this flap of skin, the animal is able to move or swim in water. The next one is turtles. Now, turtles will use their flippers. Now, if you remember, we said that penguins cannot use their wings for flying because their wings act like flippers. You can see how the shape of this limb is modified this helps in cutting and wading through water for swimming even the penguin if you see it is in the similar shape so that is why penguins can swim very well but they cannot fly now that we have spoken about different kinds of movement let us look at an interesting phenomenon called as migration now what is migration exactly if you see migration Certain animals will move very long distances in search of food or in search of shelter or sometimes to escape from cold. So, the long journey that the animal makes every single year to find warmth, to find food and to give birth to their young is called as migration. Now, let us look at this with some examples. The first example that we will see, can you recognize this bird? This is the bird that travels the longest distance. It travels a distance of 17,000 kilometers. This bird is called the Arctic Tern. Okay, so the Arctic Tern travels 17,000 kilometers every winter from Arctic to Antarctic. So when there is winter in Arctic, it will fly to Antarctic where there is summer. And when Antarctic has winter, it will fly back to Arctic where it will be summer. So you can see how far this bird actually flies. Then we have the most common example of the monarch butterfly. This is the monarch butterfly. This butterfly flies from Canada to Mexico during winter and back to Canada during summer. So this is a monarch butterfly. If you just search for monarch butterfly migration, you will see how many number of butterflies fly out and in at the same time. The next example that we will see is the eel. Now, if you see this eel, this is a freshwater eel that lives in the river. It swims about 7,000 kilometers towards the sea. It will lay the eggs in the sea and then it will die. 
and once those eggs hatch the young ones will swim back to fresh water or to the river from which their parents came so you see how interesting migration is where the parent goes to sea and lays eggs and dies while the babies swim back to where their parents lived so this is a beautiful phenomenon that we will see in animals the last example that we will take is the siberian crane this is a siberian crane now this siberian crane comes all the way to india during winters okay now in india you can see them in bharatpur and other bird sanctuaries to escape from siberian winters they fly down to india so if ever you go to any bird sanctuary during our summers you can definitely find these birds there so with this we've seen all about animals let us do a very quick recap of what all we covered first we looked at the different kinds of body coverings in that we saw shell so we saw that a turtle has a shell then we looked at scales when we saw scales we saw that fishes have scales then we looked at feathers which animals have feathers can you remember is the birds so birds have feathers then we looked at hair we saw mammals have hair and lastly under that we saw that there are also animals that have fur we took the example of the polar bear for fur so this covered the different body coverings then we moved on to different eating habitats we saw that there were three kinds of eating habitats we have herbivores we have carnivores and then we have the omnivores which eat everything then we looked at the methods of movement and for this we took the animals that move on land like the cheetah and various other examples we saw animals that can swim like the fish and of course various other examples and then we saw animals that can fly like different birds and insects we even looked at, at birds that cannot fly we took the examples of ostrich penguin and emu then we moved on to different breeding methods that animals use under this the first one we saw was lungs where we saw that humans breathe with lungs then we saw animals that move with moist skin like the earthworm then we looked at insects that use spiracles to breathe which are holes in their body and last we looked at animals that use gills to breathe under water which was nothing but the fish so these are the different methods in which breathing is achieved by these different animals then finally we looked at migration when we saw migration we took various examples like the arctic tern the monarch butterfly we saw the freshwater eel and finally we saw the siberian cranes so with this we complete the chapter animal life if in case you have any doubts at all please get back to us and we will definitely answer all your queries if you like the video please hit the like button please share it and subscribe to our channel thank you